Up until three years ago, I didn't even have a TV. The only reason why I got one was because I wanted to enjoy my PS4 Pro at that time at the highest possible visual quality. So in 2018, I bought myself an LG B7 OLED TV, which was honestly one of the best tech purchases I had ever made, as this wasn't just outstanding for playing games, but it was also an incredibly immersive experience for when I was watching movies at night, thanks to the perfect black levels. Since then, LG was kind enough to send us an LG C10, an LG G1, as well as a breathtaking LG QNED 99 which is this monstrous 77-inch 8K TV with mini-LED technology. Which got me thinking, where is the TV industry heading towards? What will a TV feature and look like a few years from now? And more importantly, which technologies are gimmicks and which ones are truly useful going forward? Well, there are six features that I think will get massive in the next couple of years, with the first one being 8K. This LG QNED 99 is the first 8K TV that I've ever laid my eyes on. And to be honest, it's incredibly sharp. Just looking at it from up close, I honestly cannot see any pixels. It's like having a gigantic 77-inch retina display in front of me. But today, in Q4 2021, it is almost impossible to take advantage of this 8K panel. That's because streaming services do not support 8K, and there are no 8K Blu-rays to watch either. YouTube does have a few 8K videos available, but the app itself only outputs in 4K. The PS5 and the Xbox Series X do support 8K output, but right now they do not have that enabled as there are no games capable of even running in 8K. So how can you even get 8K content then? Well, if you have a smartphone capable of shooting in 8K, like the Galaxy S21 Ultra, then you can stream your 8K videos directly to your TV. And if you have any photos of at least 33 megapixels in size, which is the size of 8K, you can put those on a USB drive and view those in full resolution on the TV. Oh, and if you do have a high-end gaming PC, you can connect that through the HDMI 2.1 port and view YouTube in true 8K, as well as even play some games in 8K. So yeah, viewing 8K content is a major faff today. But is it something that will become more popular tomorrow? Well, if we take a look at 4K, the first commercially available 4K TV was the LG 84 LM9600, released back in 2012 for a price of $20,000. And today, nine years later, 4K is pretty much the norm. We can find a 4K TV for as low as $280, all modern gaming consoles support 4K output, except for the Switch, and all streaming services support it too. In fact, as of March 2021, 44% of US households have a 4K compatible TV, and this only took nine years. The first commercially available 8K TV was the Samsung Q900R, released back in 2018 for a lovely price of $15,000. And if we go by how fast 4K evolved, it would take us until 2027 for 8K to become mainstream. However, I actually think that it will be less than that. You see, back in 2012, when the first 4K TV launched, consoles did not support 4K phones could not record in 4K, and movies were not released in 4K either. But in 2018, when that first commercial 8K TV launched, Japan had already launched their first 8K broadcast TV channel. And in 2019, France had experimented with airing the Roland Garo uh, tennis tournament in 8K. And just two years later, in 2020, we got 8K promises from the next-gen consoles, PCs could output in 8K, the Galaxy S20 line could also shoot 8K video, and the 2021 Summer Olympics from Tokyo were already broadcasted in 8K, with the 2024 Olympics said to be streamed in 8K HDR. So 8K already has more of a head start than 4K had. Not only that, but today we have technologies such as the LSS, which can take a lower resolution output and using AI upscale that to 8K. This way, you can actually game in 8K, at least in games that do support the LSS. In fact, even our LG 8K uses AI upscaling to upscale all of its content to 8K. It doesn't look as impressive as native 8K does, but it still looks very sharp 
from the normal viewing distance. And in the future, technologies like the LSS and AI upscaling are set to become the norm. So even if you don't have a powerful PC and console hardware uh, to support native 8K playback, you would still be able to get a sharper image than 4K, which is more evident at the larger your TV gets. And same will apply to movies, where TV chips will get more and more powerful and support even more advanced AI image upscaling, so that the 4K videos of today will look closer and closer in quality to the native 8K videos of tomorrow. Then we have high refresh rates. Today, they are becoming more and more popular. You have gaming monitors that support crazy numbers like 300 Hertz, and most high-end TVs, like our LG G1 right here, do support 120 Hertz, as well as many popular adaptive sync technologies like NVIDIA's G-Sync and AMD's FreeSync, all of which means that you get a significantly smoother experience when gaming. The PS5 and the Xbox Series X both support gaming in up to 120 frames per second, with a lot of the older games being actively updated for 120 support as well. If you're not a gamer, then you don't really care about high refresh rates. Some TVs do support motion smoothing, which means that they can turn a 20 frames per second movie into a 60 FPS one, uh, so that pans are way more fluid, but a lot of people don't like that as it ruins the director's original vision. But this is something that is already available today. Tomorrow though, high refresh rates will become the norm. 120 Hz TVs will become the default and we'll start seeing high-end TVs with refresh rates over 120 Hz, 144 Hz, and then 240 Hz as well. Consoles will eventually support frame rates higher than 120 once the Pro models of the PS5 and the Xbox Series X are out, but until then, 120 frames per second will become the go-to, with popular franchises like Call of Duty and Fortnite already supporting 120 FPS on consoles. And like I mentioned before, there's already a lot of emphasis on frame blending and motion smoothening technologies today that can add extra frames and footage. Uh, but this is something that future TVs will very likely implement for gaming as well. So that even if your hardware does not support 120 frames per second output, your TV will be able to give you that. If you're looking at buying a TV today, there's no better way of future-proofing it than making sure it has both an HDMI 2.1 connection and a 120Hz panel. I honestly think that having a high refresh rate is going to be even more important than having an 8K TV going forward. Right, now I want to show you something really cool. You all probably know what a VPN is, but Surfshark, our sponsor for this video, is a different kind of VPN. First, it offers you a web browser that prevents you from being tracked, which not even the incognito mode in other browsers protect you from. Second, Surfshark can alert you in real time if your personal data has been leaked online. Data such as passwords, your credit cards, your emails, and even your ID. And third, you can use your Surfshark account on as many devices as you want, unlike some other VPNs, which restrict you to three or five devices. And on top of all of this, you get all the benefits of having a VPN, such as private browsing and being able to change your location with the press of a button and access streaming services that you normally don't have access to. Surfshark starts from just 181 pounds a month, which is less than a cup of coffee. And if you use the coupon code Zone of Tech, you get an 83% discount and three extra months for free. Check it out by using the link below. Then we have the actual panel technology. So today, the most advanced panel technology is OLED. They offer perfect black levels and the lowest possible response time for gaming. The only downside is that they don't get quite bright, so if you are in a bright room, then they're going to be quite difficult to see. In terms of what's coming tomorrow, there are two new panel technologies that are looking to solve this brightness issue of OLED. The first one being Mini LED, which is a standard LCD, but with its backlight split into a lot of smaller sections that can individually turn on and off to light up or darken specific areas of the image. Our LG QNED 99 is one of the very few Mini LED TVs on the market, and I gotta say, I am extremely impressed. Our office is very bright, and unlike our OLED, I haven't had any issues viewing content on this mini LED TV. In fact, this is actually LG's brightest TV to date. Not only that, but its local dimming is honestly outstanding. Even in a pitch black room, I was not able to see any backlight bleeding at all. This to me looks just as good as OLED in terms of the black levels. The only difference being that it can get much brighter. But aside from mini LED, there is one more important future technology, which is micro LED. This involves extremely tiny LEDs that can get to insanely high levels of brightness, and they're also individually dimmable. Essentially the same way OLED works, just significantly brighter, even brighter than mini LED TVs. 
but they're still quite a few years away. Until then, to me, the best overall panel technology seems to be mini LED, thanks to its superb brightness and almost OLED-like black levels. Another technology that might become big in the future is transparent displays. Just like the TV that Xiaomi demoed, but these displays are mostly useful for showrooms as using them as a home TV is not ideal since the picture would be heavily influenced by what's behind the TV. At number four, we have the software that these TVs are running on. And today, TVs have actually gotten crazy smart. We have TVs with not just fully fledged web browsers and Bluetooth mice and keyboards, uh, but literally Google Assistant built in that can control your lights and find the exact content that you're looking for in a matter of seconds across multiple streaming platforms. Speaking of streaming platforms, these TVs have their own app store where you can purchase content and even download some basic games from there. In fact, if you just bought a new TV, there is literally zero reason for you to purchase a separate setup box, and this is going to be more and more relevant in the future. My TV got an update about a week ago to support Apple Music, which up until now, I had to use my Apple TV for. Tomorrow, it won't be out of question for TVs to get native Xbox Game Pass support so that you could just pair a wireless controller and instantly jump into Microsoft's selection of cloud games. Or we could even get full Windows support. They're all running on ARM processors and Microsoft and Qualcomm are both making a push towards Windows on ARM. So this will 100% be a possibility in the future. You could just connect one of those wireless keyboards with a built-in trackpad and immediately turn your entertainment zone into a productivity zone. And number five, we have design, which I think is going to be a massive thing to consider when buying a TV in the future, as we'll get to a point where all TVs will be this very thin piece of glass, like the LG G1 is today. Since it's an OLED TV specifically designed to be wall-mounted, uh, it looks like this super thin sheet of glass that just floats on your wall. It looks incredible. So the only way for manufacturers to innovate design-wise is to create unique designs, like the sky glass, which is made entirely out of anodized aluminium and comes in five different colors to match your wall. There's no denying that the sky glass looks like a piece of furniture, like something that was designed specifically for your own living room. It kind of makes me think of the new iMacs, which Apple designed in such a way that they could perfectly match your room. Another great example of a unique design is Samsung's Frame TV, which not only looks like literally a picture frame on the wall, but you can even analyze the wall behind it and mimic it to create the illusion of this empty picture frame. Or even the Philips UTVs to some extent, which can light up the wall behind them with colors to match whatever is on the screen for a far more immersive experience. This is what I predict we'll see more and more of in the future. Uniqueness and a seamless integration with the environments that the TVs are in. You've probably seen LG's rollable TV, which literally rolls from inside a piece of furniture. Things like this are very likely to become the norm now that we have foldable and rollable display technology. Not only that, but you could have a TV that unrolls to change its aspect ratio based on the content that you're watching. LG's rollable TVs already did this, although only vertically. And at number six, we have sound. You see, today, TV manufacturers don't really pay much attention to sound. TVs are becoming thinner and thinner, which leaves less and less room for high-quality powerful speakers. Yet, to be honest, even this crazy thin LG G1 that's well-mounted sounds awesome. Like, I never expected this level of sound quality to come out of a TV that was this thin. However, it still cannot compare to a dedicated soundbar, even to an entry-level one. But remember when I said that some TVs are starting to adopt a design that mimics living room furniture? Well, some of them, like the Sky Glass, do have a built-in soundbar as part of that design, which sounds just mind-blowing compared to other TVs. Now, LG's Wallpaper TV, for example, comes with a dedicated box that houses all the inputs, and that box is also a soundbar. And I think that the TVs of tomorrow will focus on sound quality heavily, especially once the image quality reaches a limit with things such as 8K and micro LED. So in conclusion, I think that the main takeaway of this video is that out of every single one of these technologies, the one that you'll care about the most, if you're a gamer, is the refresh rate. But if movies are your thing, then mini LED will be the way to go for the best overall balance between brightness and black levels. All TVs mentioned in this video are linked down below in case you're interested in any of them. And let me know in the comments which technology do you think will be the most important one for you going forward in the future. And definitely subscribe if you have enjoyed this video. I'm Daniel, this has been Zenoff Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. 
Synaptech, signing out. Cheers. Yeah.